Amen. How are you guys doing this evening? It's great to see you all again so soon. I think we lost a leg, but it's okay. I won't push down too hard. Well, hey, uh, you guys know me already. My name is Chad. I'm the pastor of missions and evangelism here at the church. And we are launching our Ignite, I'm sorry, Ignite, the Witness Campaign uh, the last weekend, and we'll be moving towards Easter. We want to give you guys tools on how to engage your friends and families with the gospel. And, uh, and so tonight, this is going to be a, a crash course through some really simple ways to start conversations. We call them gospel conversations. Uh, they're little tools that help us just have uh, ways to, to, to start up a conversation that will lead people, hopefully, uh, towards some spiritual um, effort in their life, some spiritual conversation that, that, that helps us. So before we jump into that, I want you guys to know, if you haven't picked up a witness box, you should pick one up. We are praying that God would use our church over the next 30 days leading up to Easter um, to reach out to three people. You would pray for three people every day. Three people who are close to you and far from God. That you'd pray that God would give you an opportunity in the next 30 days to share a gospel conversation with them, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. A, go- a conversation that asks them about their spiritual life and, and opens the door for them to tell you whether they're moving towards Christ, whether they have rejected him completely, or whether it's just not the right time right now. And we can talk about how you do those things. And then lastly, we want you to be really, we're asking a really bold request that you would open your home and invite one of those people or their family into your home for a dinner where you can pray over your dinner, you can encourage them. Um, It's something that happens when you fill someone's belly, you open their heart. It's just part of the, it's a formula that seems to work really well in almost every context. When you spend time together and you invest in them, then they're totally okay uh, talking to you about things that that are important to them. And so take the risk, take the risk. Who are the family? I'd ask you even now, start praying. Who are the three people that you're praying for? Who are the three people that you're hoping to have a conversation with them? What's the one person? I'm not telling you to invite them to church. We expect that that's an automatic. They're always welcome here. We're asking to invite them into your home, all right? So it's somebody that's close enough to you that you feel comfortable bringing them into your house. All right, so we're praying that God would use your oikos. I've used that word a few times when I've preached, but the oikos is a Greek word that means household. And what it means, it's like the household of faith. Uh, The first time you see the word oikos in the New Testament, it's when Cornelius invites Peter into his home. You remember this story? And when Peter arrives there, it says that, that, that Cornelius has gathered his oikos, his household, and included people that lived with him, of course, his immediate family, but also included probably anyone that worked under him. Remember, he was a military leader, so probably he had other military personnel was with him. Also, any servants that worked in his house, any of his friends and neighbors. It could have been a fairly large group that gathered in Cornelius' house for him to, to introduce them to this man, Peter. And so when we talk about oikos, we're talking about who is your relational network, the people that you see day in and day out, people that you know their name and they know your name, people that you could invite to coffee and they wouldn't think you were weird. Right? Those are the kind of people we're talking about. They're people that you're close to in some way. So when I say close to you and far from God, who are the people in your life that are close enough that you could invite them over and they wouldn't be like, what is going on? This person's really strange. And invite them into your home and have a cup of coffee with them. Maybe it's a family member. And, uh, and you say, well, the family members, those are tough because they already know all these things about me. So how am I going to invite them over and have a conversation we've already had a hundred times? And I don't know the answer to that question. But if you invite them over, you're very welcome to say, hey, how are things going in your life? What's, what's going on? I always, my brothers, like, I ask them weird questions. They say it's weird. I ask them, how's your heart? And they're like, no one asks me, who's, how's my heart? What do you even mean by that? So I just want to know, how are you feeling? How's life? Are you okay? Are things good, bad, or in between right now? When I say, how's your heart? I just want to know what's going on with you. Are you feeling like things are good or bad? Or, or how can I pray for you? And that's really the question I want to get to. Okay, so let's walk through a really simple tool. It's called Prayer Care Share. Um, And what it is, is just a really simple thing. If you're talking to somebody that you're close to, again, this is a bold conversation, but I I use this all the time. Even people I'm not real close to, I ask people, how can I pray for you? They know I'm a believer. If they don't, I'll even start with, hey, I follow Jesus, I'm a Christian. Most people are not offended if you say you're a Christian. But I tell them I'm a Christian. I like to ask people how I can pray for them. Is there anything going on in your life that you would like me to pray for? 
And very few people say no to that. Even the ones that say, well, I don't really believe there's a God. I'm like, that's okay. Doesn't hurt to ask him to help you, does it? And they're like, man, no, not really. Okay, so what, what can I pray for? Sometimes it's their job. Sometimes it's a family member that's sick. Sometimes it's silly things like, like uh, I need to get gas in my car. I don't know. Sometimes it's really something simple. And so um, if they give me a response, which they often do, I ask them, and this is where it really gets weird, can I pray for you now? And, uh, and if especially if it's something important, like my mom's sick. During COVID, there was a lot of people that had COVID. So they would tell you, my mom's in the hospital and it's not looking good. Well, can I pray for her right now? What's her name? And uh, what's your name? And kinda, you can ask questions. And then when I pray, one of the things that Barna tells us is that most people living in the United States today have never heard their name in a prayer before. Isn't that odd? If you've grown up in a, Christian, in a Christian world, it seems very common that someone might pray for you by name, but many people in our country have never been prayed for by name. So when I pray, I ask, I ask the Lord to bless them, and I use their name. Then I'll, talk, I'll, I'll pray for the needs specifically, the way that, God, that they represented it. If they need gas in their car, Lord, help them find a way to provide for themselves so they can get gas in their car. And then lastly, I'm gonna say, Lord, help them draw near to you and, 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 and help them become like you. Help them to know that you love them. Those are all things that you can say in a prayer. And people know that while you're praying, they're not supposed to interrupt you. So, you know, you've got them on the hook for just a second there. Now, don't take that too far. You're not going to preach a sermon in your prayer just because you can. Right? So you're going to ask them how you can pray. And then if they give you a response, pray for them right there on the spot. You can do that at HEB or Starbucks. You can do that without it being too strange. Um, You've probably seen people doing it. And you might have thought that was strange. But to the people who are being prayed for, you'd be surprised how it impacts them. Sometimes they tear up. Sometimes they cry. Sometimes they say, man, I've never been prayed for like that. Thank you. Um, And uh, and it opens their heart. And so that's the prayer, right? You ask them how you can pray. And prayer, care, share. If you pray for them right there, you've cared for them in a very tangible and real way. And if you have that opportunity to pray for them, you can roll right out of your prayer and ask them, have you ever had a relationship with Jesus? And oftentimes if you've Ask them how you can pray for them. And then you've prayed for them. When you ask them if they've had a relationship with Jesus, they're open to tell you about it. And it gives you an opportunity to share a very simple, very real gospel presentation. And so that prayer, care, share model is just a simple model you can use with your friends, your family, anybody, anywhere. You can ask them how you can pray, then pray with them, and then ask them if they've had a relationship with Jesus. And it unpacks so much. So from there, I would tell you there's hundreds of gospel tools. Maybe you've learned the bridge or the Roman road to salvation, or uh, we use, we've been training everyone with the three circles model of, of gospel presentation. Uh, Pastor Jason has a really neat model where he's talking about um, your, your sin and how God has redeemed you from that sin, the white book and the black book. It's, it's a fantastic presentation. Those, those are all available online. We've got, we've got links uh, so that you can, if you go to, uh, oh, Robbie's going to kill me. Um, if you go to our website and click on, on uh, missions, it's in, it's in there. There's these links to evangelism tools. I think it's, let me, I may be wrong. I think it's fbcbernie.org slash gospel. And it gets you a whole bunch of different tools right there that you can click on. But in case you can't remember that, guess what? We have all of those things right here in this little box. So in the last few minutes, I want to tell you what our goal is in this box. Our goal is that it gives you the tools. So the first thing you're going to see when you open it is this little card from Jason. It's just encouraging you and thanking you for taking, being bold enough to take this. We, we've prepared 150 of these. We've, we think that there's about 300 or 400 families that attend our church. That makes up the 800 or 900 people that come every week. But out of that, we've, we've hoped that 150 of them would be bold enough to take one of these boxes. Last year, 125 people, 125 families took a box. And so we'd love for you to take one. If you haven't taken one tonight, take one before you leave. Uh, We'll have them out again this Sunday, and uh, hopefully they'll all be gone. Um, So you've got the card. It just says thank you and encourages you a little bit. There's this little um, Do You Know Jesus card inside. On the back of it's a QR code that takes you to Jason's gospel presentation tool. And so two things, if you're afraid that you're not going to say it right, you can always just click on this and play it for somebody if they want to watch it, right? It's always available to you. You can use it. This little thing is available in our, in our um, front office. You can pick these up. These kind of all around our church. 
We're also giving you a $25 HEB gift card. And this seems to strike fear in the heart of our people. I'm not sure why. Um, people are like, oh, I don't want to take the card. I don't know why this card is such a stumbling block. Um, from my perspective, we want to bless you. You guys bless us day in and day out. Every week when you give and you support the ministry of this church, you're giving us the ability to bless many. Not only our families and, and the, the staff here at FBC, but to the end of the earth. We're, we're supporting missionaries all around the world. We do so many things with the resources that God gives us through your, your, your generosity. And this $25 is a way for you to bless people around you. So yes, we want you to use it to pay for that meal that you're going to have with that one person the next 30 days. But if you're like, I don't need that, then take that gift card and give it to somebody who you know does need it. Spend it well. Use it, use it as a contribution into someone's life for kingdom purposes. Let this be a really small way that you impact someone's life. And let us do it through you. So that's what we're doing, okay? Don't be afraid. If you're afraid to take the boxes, you don't need the card. Take it anyway and do something good with it, will you? All right. Beyond the card from Jason and the gift card, we have a bunch of other tools in here. So one of them is everything that's in the box. And on the back of this is conversation starters, gospel conversation starters, a whole list of questions. If you have someone into your, your home and you're not sure what you should ask, you can ask them, how long have you lived in the hill country? It doesn't seem very difficult, does it? What's your favorite sport? Did you get to play it in high school or anything, right? You ask some simple questions. You can ask funny things like, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Jason likes to ask our staff, what's the craziest thing you've done in the name of love? We have some really funny answers to that question. You should ask our staff. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and then at the bottom, there's spiritual questions. How can we pray for your family? Would you consider your family religious? Do you have any expectations of God? Has he met them or has he not? Those questions might get some interesting answers. What do you like most about Christians? What do you like least about Christians? That should get some fun responses. And right, have you ever had an interaction with Jesus? Do you pray? Do you have faith? All those are there just as, as, as prompts for you. We also include in here an invitation to invite some of your neighbors to Easter. These are going to be all over the next few weeks. You could invite your entire neighborhood with these cards. They are low cost and low risk. You can put them in everyone's mailbox. You might get in trouble, but some people do it. Last year I heard somebody was putting them in, forgive me, this is not my recommendation. Jason's shaking his head, no, I'll hold off on that one. <laughs> you can give these to anybody. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there, we're just gonna leave it there. Jason, thank you. I need somebody to kick me every now and then. We also have some coloring books for kids. We've got some, some, um, a devotional for youth, a couple of those in there. So if you have young adults involved. And then lastly, we've got these fun little things like this little squeeze ball. It's got a world so you can pray, pray for people and pray for parts of the world. We've got a couple little globe keychains if you want to remember our missionaries. We've got some candy in there. And lastly, it's a fun little table game called Left, Right, Center that you can play. That's just a fun little thing you could do at the table. All of these things we put in here are just an effort for you to have a good time with somebody in your home. Does that make sense to you? Um, it's not because we're trying to be extravagant. There's a lot of crazy or cool things we could put in there, but we were just trying to be helpful. So please pick up this box. Please take it with you. But more than anything else, gosh, think about the lost people that God has drawn to you. The scriptures are very clear that God saves us. He calls us his own so that through us, the people in our lives can find him as well. It's as though God were written on our hearts a letter to the men and women in your life. Right? When they look at you, Doug, do they see the letter from Christ written to them? Is it, is it in a tangible, incarnational way that makes sense to them? When they see you, they know how much God loves them. Because that's what we are called to be. And so please, as you, especially as we consider Easter, be thinking about how you can engage the lost people in your life. All right? All right, let's pray. Father God, we come before you thankful. Thankful that, man, before time began, Lord, you thought about all of us. The lost of this world throughout all the ages. And God, how you thought about calling them 
calling them to yourself and calling them to know you and, and positioning yourself in front of us in so many ways. We thank you for the many links in the chain that brought the gospel to our front door, God, to our heart. We pray, God, that we would be the link that takes that gospel to the next generation. God, we love you. We pray that you would inspire us. Give us your word. Give us your spirit. Give us your words, Father, so that we can reflect your love well to those around us. Use us for your kingdom, God. Draw people to yourself through our efforts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful night. God bless you.